this. April of 1986, my, my wife and I, we took our, our five-month-old child, our first uh, child. We went to Mesa, Arizona. We went there to watch the NFL draft. And I learned while we were there that I had just gotten drafted by the then St. Louis Cardinals. Um, right after the draft, my dad got a call from Mike Kelly, who said, hey, we're in town. Uh, our kids are performing in Scottsdale. We like that. Uh, we like you to come and see us. So my dad said, "Hey, let's." Uh, my dad didn't know anything about the Jets. Uh, he said uh, he and Mike Kelly grew up in Halafuli in uh, in Babao, and they knew each other. Mike Kelly's younger, but my my dad married a Wolfgram, um, so they were close. They said, uh, we, 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 "Let's go see uh, Mike Kelly and Bob Kelly." So we went to Scottsdale. We went there. Um, you know, I played football at BYU and I was used to staying in nice hotels when we traveled. They were in a nice hotel. What I couldn't, um, what I'd never seen before was the tour bus that they were in. And uh, so all the kids came out and we met them and they were all teenagers. Uh, I think Liz was probably, I'm going to say 13, 14 years old. Moana was the youngest. I, I, Moana was probably 12 or 13, but they were that young. And Eugene's a little bit older, and, and uh, uh, Leroy and, and Eddie were older, but they were all in their teens. They were teenage kids, and they were so. Mike Kelly and Bakke gave us a tour of their bus, and I remember thinking, uh, these are the first Tongan superstars on this planet. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like this, in, you know. In, I played college football, but I hadn't been to the pros yet. But here's how it impacted my life. When I left, when they, we went to see them perform, and I, I still remember the two other groups that were with them. The kids will remember this, and some of you won't remember any of that, unless you're my age or older. Uh, one of them was Jermaine Stewart, uh, and the other was Sly Fox. The two hits that they had, I can't even say it because the general authority should be saying it. <laughs> um, but they were on the uh, Crush Out You tour. And I remember just being backstage and watching them perform. And uh, when I left for the NFL training camp later that summer, that had an impact on my life because I, I, I watched these kids perform as teenagers and I toured their tour bus and I thought, this is actually possible because, you know, there are other Tongans who are doing something that no one else has done before and no one has ever seen. Um, and I just remember the way I watched Eugene and his siblings, um, the way they interacted with each other and the way they treated us. They didn't know us. Um, maybe they you know, watched me play football at BYU, but they we really didn't know each other. And they were just kids. But I remember feeling that because uh, our fathers were close and loved each other, that they sat and listened to us talk and visit. And uh, uh, I, I just never forgotten that. Um, I, I, I love you, my family, and uh, I come to just, shall I come bring you the condolences to President Nelson and the First Presidency and President Holland and the Quorum of the Twelve. On behalf of the leadership of the church, I come simply to express my love to you and their great admiration for you and your family. And uh, you remember what the leaders of the church have taught us that we are safest within our covenants. You keep your covenants. You teach your children about the Savior and His atoning sacrifice. And I promise you, the day and time will come when you will be reunited with, with Eugene in more joy and more happiness than you can ever fathom. I love you. Uh, express my deep 
appreciation for you and your family. I bear witness of the Savior and his atoning sacrifice. He is Jehovah of the Old Testament. He is the Messiah of the New Testament. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace. And I bear witness of his holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.